this morning is different than what is printed in your bulletin. Our ballot this morning comes from the 8th chapter of John, beginning with the 31st verse. That Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you. God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, today is a big day, isn't it? It is Confirmation Sunday, and I think for these seven young people up here, they probably all have a different meaning or version of what Confirmation is to them, and maybe you have your own thoughts of what Confirmation is. Some people think of Confirmation as the fulfillment of the baptismal promise to provide instruction in the Christian faith to these young people when they were baptized. Others view it as a rite of passage that every 7th and 8th grader should go through in their lives. Others view it um, maybe as kind of just something that has to be done. They did it, their parents did it, their grandparents did it, so their kids will do it. Some people view it as pure and utter torture. <laughs> it's not pure and utter torture, right? Watch what you say, you're not done with me yet. <laughs> Well, you know what I think of it is? When I think of confirmation, I think that it's an apprenticeship for discipleship. You know, I have an uncle who's a carpenter in Illinois, and he served an apprenticeship in the Carpenters Union before he became a carpenter. He spent four years in the classroom and on the job training, learning everything there was to know about being a carpenter, and even more so. And when I asked him about it once, he said that he was really glad that he did it because it provided him a really deep and solid foundation for his career following, which is going on over 30 years now. And I really think that that's what confirmation is. Over these last two years, we have been trying to provide you a foundation for what it means to be a disciple in the world. It has been an apprenticeship for discipleship. And everything that we've done has had a reason for it. Like your favorite thing, sermon notes. I know how much you love to do sermon notes. You wish you could be doing a sermon note right now, don't you? Yes. Oh, I got, I got a shake no over here. But, but Nick, you always the wrong nose are saying yes. <laughs> you know, a sermon note, really you know what that is? That's teaching you how to listen to a sermon. And to ask yourself the question, what does this sermon mean to me? What will I take away today from worship? That's what a sermon note is. You know, we, we made you do memory work. You all love the memory work. We gave you memory work in, in certain verses of the Bible, things that we think are important that you can turn to time and time again when you're searching for what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And we get, had you memorize things like the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed, things that every disciple of Christ should know. You did community service and worship service, and that was to teach you that as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we are the hands and feet of God, both inside the church and outside the church. That where we go, we can provide help and love and grace to others. So we have been giving you these last couple of years an apprenticeship for discipleship. And it might be tempting to you to think, now you're done. And in reality, you're only just beginning. Today marks the first step of you being a fully formed disciple in the world. It's only step one today. And so your apprenticeship will actually continue from here on. But now we're going to transfer. We're going to transfer who is going to be your apprentice, who's going to be your leader, who's going to be your guide from 
me and this church back to who was your first leader and guide? Your parents. Parents, this is not the end for you to be an example of faith to your child. This is only the beginning. Because as they step into a wider and more responsible self, both in school and in the church, you're going to be their guide. You are the best example of faith for your child. And what you show them and how you guide them is going to go a long way into how they're going to be grown and be mature in the faith from here on out. And not only you parents, but you grandparents, baptismal sponsors, friends and family in attendance, you will continue to be the cheerleaders and the encouragers and the teachers of these young people after today. What you do and how you encourage them in the faith can be a great strength to them. Because life gets dramatic in high school. And life gets dramatic in college. And life gets dramatic after college. And they're going to need their faith. And they're going to need to remember that foundation. And you will be the reminders. You will be the examples. Baptismal promises don't end on Confirmation Sunday. In many ways, they begin anew, where you will be called to bring them to God's house, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and provide for instruction in the Christian faith, so that no matter what comes their way in the next 60 to 70 to 80 years from today, they will have and know that God is there to get them through it. That they will remember that they are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that they have been given forgiveness, life, and salvation in his name. And we, people of God, members of Trinity Lutheran Church and guests and others, we will continue as well to embrace these children and provide in invitation to them to enter into the life of ministry here, within these walls and outside these walls. And you know what's going to be interesting? As we attempt to inspire them in the faith, they will in turn inspire us and strengthen us and remind us of who we belong to and who has saved and redeemed us the son of god jesus christ has come and forgiven us of our sins and given us eternal life as they do their apprenticeship and discipleship so too will we be apprenticed by them because they will teach us a lot as they already have today is a big day an important day a day of celebration and we give thanks to God for you seven, for the ministry you've done in this congregation, and for the ministry you will do within and outside of these walls. And we give thanks this day that Christ has saved us not by our works, but by faith through grace, grace as a gracious and loving gift given to all of us. For we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but we are saved and redeemed by a God who has sent his son to die for us. So we have lots of reasons to be joyful, lots of reasons to be filled with hope, starting first with these seven and then with all of you. But most importantly, we remember that no matter where we go and no matter where you will go, God will be with you. Remember the foundation that you have been given. Lean on the Savior who walks with you, dies for you, and brings you to eternal life. And for that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I ask that you please rise and turn to our hymn.